Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy. That can be proven by Kazuichi's account. Huh? Me? Remember? When we moved from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower, we thought the body had moved. And that's when you said... Right up until that moment, you were disassembling Nekomaru's body at Grape Tower, right? The killer couldn't have known how you'd take apart his body, so they couldn't have built a dummy. Kazuichi... You were your own contradiction! Unless Kazuichi was the one who built the dummy, then it would be a different story. Oh my god, you're right! Kazuichi, is there something you want to tell us? <laughs> Miss Sonia, that's a pretty harsh joke. We might have a killer on our hands. <laughs> the ultimate princess never jokes. You are joking, right? She's giving you death blades, man. You're not gonna survive this. It's all right. Kazuichi is not the killer. Yeah, I don't think he's capable of killing anybody. If he was, he wouldn't have fixed the elevator or the button in Strawberry Hall. Correct. It'd be much more convenient for the killer if it stayed broken. I see. That is disappointing. <laughs> the ultimate insult! I'm even more disappointed. God, that's gotta suck! I almost feel sorry for you. However, even if Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy, it's meaningless if we don't have the important answer. The reason Nekomaru's body was in both towers even though it was supposed to be on different floors. Maybe it was simply moved? Hmm... The body moved to a different floor? That could be. You can't think of a device like that? A device that moves things to different floors in the same building? Hmm... What could that highlighted sentence mean? A device like that? I might have an answer for you. Transporting different floors. Oh, what's that thing called? Ugh. Yeah, you have seen one before. We rode one on the way here. Think. Eight-letter word. Transportation. Must be talking about an elevator. No! What? Are you saying Nekomaru's body was transported using an elevator? Damn straight, yo! Where the hell is this elevator anyway? <laughs> I got it. It's the tower itself. Hell yes, Hajime. It is the tower itself. The inside of the tower is one big elevator. It's the only thing that makes sense. Which means the tower was designed so that the whole room goes up and down like an elevator. So whether you enter from Strawberry Hall or Grape Hall, it all leads to the same room, right? And this is why nobody is allowed in the tower while you're moving from tower to tower. So you don't ruin the illusion of the funhouse. So that's why we could only enter it from one side or the other. Now that you mention it... Sometimes when I pressed the door button, it took a while for it to open. Yes! I see! We were basically waiting for the room to arrive just like an elevator! <gasps> Please hold on! 
If the inside of the whole tower ascends and descends like an elevator, then why is there a picture of a strawberry on the far back door when you enter from Grape Tower? And a picture of a grape on the far back door when you enter from Strawberry Tower? If the room just moves up and down like an elevator, there's no reason for the doors to change. Actually... Plus, after the incident, the far back door in Grape Tower had chains wrapped around it, right? But when we entered Strawberry Tower, those chains were gone. Not just that, but if I remember correctly, even the doorknob was broken off. <laughs> there are too many strange things. Was that tower really an elevator? When you see people and things, make sure you focus on the good parts instead of the bad. Thanks for the pep talk. What? What did you say? So, let's put aside what's changed and focus our attention on what hasn't. Okay. Why do we have to do that? It's fine. Come on. What does everything that hasn't changed have in common? Oh, Chiaki, I get you. Yes, yes. When we move between the two towers, what did not change? The body, the pillar, the oil. Yeah, we've been talking about that stuff. And the thing that hasn't changed between us going from one tower to the other... They all have one thing in common. They were all on the floor. I see! Is it safe to say that all the items on the floor didn't change? And? And? Why did the picture on the far back door change? If you can figure that out, you'll have the answer. The reason is because that elevator has something unique about it. Something un unique about it. So you may notice that there's a giant chunk of life now missing from my life bar. Apparently I can't understand a simple question. I see! So that's it. The elevator was designed so only the floor moved. Only the floor moved? Which means the whole room wasn't an elevator. Only the floor was. That's why we saw different doors in each tower. Which means on the first floor of Grape Tower, the door on the far back wall had a strawberry design. And on the fourth floor, which was Strawberry Tower, a different door on the far back wall had a grape design. Then, where do the different floors lead? I want to say they lead outside, but they're probably just for show. I would agree with that. Just for show? Why was something like that necessary? To create the illusion of the funhouse. So we'd falsely believe that the doors were connected to where their picture signified. It was actually very effective. Because of that, we totally misunderstood the building's structure. I don't get it. But I guess it means whoever designed this building had a totally twisted personality. All eyes go straight towards Monokuma. Did you hear that, Monami? Oh! Don't bring this on me! Take responsibility for yourself! Then I'll take responsibility and gently caress you. <laughs> like, there's no way that's gonna happen! Stop with the tasteless jokes! Hey, you fell for it! By the way, what does the chain on the far back door in Grape Tower mean? It was... Probably wrapped there by the killer to keep us as far from Strawberry Tower as possible. Why? Because of that chain. You guys thought you couldn't enter there, right?
I know this is something I was complaining about because there were giant chains on the door. If you open it from the other side, that's not going to change anything. But with what we know now, Nagito was completely right. We didn't need to worry about it. The killer destroyed the Strawberry Hall button, so we'd stay away from Strawberry Tower. Everything was done to tamper with the evidence, so we wouldn't find out about the secret of the funhouse. The appearance of a body in the tower would contradict what we thought we knew about the building. In that situation, if we'd gone to Strawberry Tower, we'd have seen that contradiction firsthand. And using that as a clue, we might have discovered the truth. The truth that the two houses and the two towers are actually one complete vertical building. The killer wanted to keep us from learning that. That's why they made us stay away from Strawberry Tower. They destroyed the button and wrapped a chain around the door just for that? Would it really have inconvenienced the killer if we learned the true structure of the building? It would have been a major inconvenience. After all, this funhouse is strongly connected to the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru. Hold on. You're progressing much too quickly. There's still a contradiction concerning the building structure. What a pain. It's fine already. Shut up, Kazuichi. I gotta hear this. Gundam, please proceed. <laughs> you said earlier that Strawberry House and Grape House are connected vertically, right? If so, how does the contact elevator supposedly transport us from one house to the other? Oh. All right. That's a good thing to bring up. Good job, Gundam, for pointing that out. If that elevator moves vertically, then when your back is facing the elevator, both towers should be on the same side. But, does this reflect reality? Inside Grape House, Grape Hall is on your right when your back is to the elevator. And inside Strawberry House, Strawberry Hall is on your left when your back is to the elevator. Which means the houses are on exact opposite sides of the tower. Answer me, fiend! What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? If they are connected vertically, then Gundam's argument holds water. It, it absolutely makes no sense. It completely destroys what we know about the funhouse. Maybe there's another way. Another way that it would still make sense for the towers and the houses to be one giant vertical building. But we need to explain how that elevator would work. This is going to be one hell of a contradiction. Hmm... The two houses are connected vertically. The elevator should move. Vertically, not horizontally. However, at both houses, if the contact elevator is behind you, the towers are in opposite directions. Which means your reasoning is clearly contradictory. What's with this iron curtain of teamwork? You know, that's a good way to put it. Sonya and Gundam, they are so well together. Completing each other's contradictions. They're going around and they're trying to prove us wrong. But I got it. I've got this. Let me take a quick read at the truth bullet I actually have loaded. 
Kazuichi. He actually solved the mystery of the elevator. Apparently, the compass's needle spun 180 degrees while it was inside the contact elevator. Now I think I get it. So let's uh, let's shoot down one of Gundam's statements. If the two Said it clear as day. Vertically. Let's see. The elevator should move. Should move. Vertically, not horizontally. Well, actually, you're right. No, that's wrong. Except it's going vertically another way. The elevator wasn't just moving vertically. Correct. Isn't that right, Kazuichi? Huh? Me? Yeah, you? Come on. You used the elevator while you were holding that compass Nagito gave you, right? Ah, uh, that. Yeah, it was pretty strange. You didn't think anything else of it? Think of it, man! From start to finish, somehow the compass needle rotated 180 degrees. Exactly. Rotated 180 degrees? Now you need to start thinking. How could an elevator go 180 degrees and vertically? Meaning, as the elevator moved between the two houses, it also rotated 180 degrees. Just like you're seen there. It... It was probably following the building's perimeter as it rotated to the other side. Which means the exit would be on the opposite side once you arrived at the other house, right? Correct. And thanks to that, the tower we saw on our right side when we arrived at Grape House appeared on our left side when we were at Strawberry House. An elevator that rotates while it moves. Is that even possible? It's like something from an amusement park. Whoa! Well, a fun house is an amusement park attraction, you know. And since the building doesn't really need to be structurally practical, it makes for some splendid fun. That's not splendid at all. You're inhuman. You say I'm inhuman, but I'm just a bear. So I was never human to begin with. What? I'm different from these lowly humans. But you will never match Gundam's strength. So we're done with the secret of the funhouse, right? Then let's start talking about the important stuff. What's the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru? And how'd they combine it with the pillar? Huh? You still don't know what the ultimate weapon is yet? It's what I found at the Octagon, you know. What is the Octagon? I haven't heard about that yet. Oh my... I can't believe I have to explain that now. As long as you know what an octagon means, you can solve this simple mystery easily. You're not gonna make us answer that, are you? Oh my god, you're not kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> you don't have much faith in your players, do you? Octagon. Octo. Eight. I see! If I recall, an octagon is a shape with eight sides, right? Go back to first grade, everybody. I didn't expect you to know that. For a substitute reserve course student, you're quite knowledgeable. Do you want to keep kicking me while I'm down and then set me on fire? Ouch! I guess I should continue listening. Where is the place befitting of the name Octagon? Well, the only place that would make sense to make an octagon would be right here? Well, duh, I know that. Alright, so that's not what they want me to do. Crap! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me think about this real quick. Here! Oh my god. You're talking about the secret room surrounded by concrete in the depths of the final dead room. Why is that place the octagon? You know how the four-sided strawberry house is on top of the six-sided grape house? 
If you cut a four-sided shape out of a six-sided one, you get eight edges. It becomes an eight-sided shape. Wow. That's basically the gist of it. The true identity of the octagon is that secret room in the depths of the final dead room. In actuality, that place contained various weapons. Then the ultimate weapon was there too? That's a little different. I learned the true identity of the ultimate weapon at the octagon. Learned? The true identity of the ultimate weapon is the funhouse. <gasps> oh. Which means the killer used the building structure as their weapon and killed Nekomaru. Oh, damn. Like me, the killer probably realized the secret of the funhouse from the scenery and then thought of a way to kill making use of the building structure. The funhouse itself is the weapon, so they killed using the building structure? That's why the killer tried to keep us from learning the mystery of the building. But more importantly, using the building itself as a weapon? Such a spectacular crime. <laughs> It truly deserves to be called the ultimate weapon! That's ingenious. The funhouse itself is the ultimate weapon. Somebody used the funhouse to their advantage and managed to kill somebody with it. We're gonna have to figure out how. If we're to believe Nagito, then yeah, the funhouse itself is the ultimate weapon. And yeah, we might want to make some headway into who the actual killer is. Do tell. <laughs> Will it have to be censored? And that's when Danganronpa 2 suddenly became AO. Monami, you're just asking for trouble, aren't you? Is a serious stufat. Stufatly. Oh, is there more to it? Joining words together to make one giant insult. Huh? Well, you can see it? Okay, everyone! All together now! Monami is a serious stufatly! Wah, wah. 